The next one is optimizing performance. So optimizing performance is an interesting thing because, uh, you know, it's, it's an area where it takes a lot of understanding of what your use case is and how the actual table format interacts with that. Uh, this generally means that you want to do things like reduce the amount of metadata, make sure your metadata is aligned with how your query patterns are executing, and you know, making sure that your data sets are well maintained so they aren't processing lots and lots of data. So rewrite metadata is another procedure. It's not as much a maintenance procedure. You don't have to do this. And there are many cases where it doesn't necessarily make sense to do uh, rewrite metadata operations. But what this does do is it allows you to leverage Iceberg's uh, kind of tree of metadata to pivot that to what your query patterns are. I would generally say this is something you want to do on data sets where it's really important that you get good performance because any kind of ad hoc query engine, the, the Trinos, the Star Rocks, the Impalas, all of those things, they'll benefit from being able to prune as much data, as many manifests as possible during that planning phase. It'll reduce the load on the actual cluster and it'll improve the performance of the queries. But most importantly, data engineering still applies here. Like everything that you've known about partitioning data in like a Hive-like system or even working in a, you know, a Teradata or something like that where you can give instructions on clustering and sorting, all of these concepts still apply in Iceberg. And the general recommendations that we give is, one, use Iceberg features like hidden partitioning. One of the big challenges you get with performance is if you have two different columns that represent time for say, like you've got a time that is a partition column and then you actually have the event timestamp. This is something that is very common in Hive. Uh, users may choose the wrong thing in, in terms of filter conditions. And oftentimes they actually have to choose both. You need to do your partition pruning and then you also need to do your timestamp pruning. And that's very error prone because analysts who are coming in with a background uh, from traditional relation, uh, traditional relational databases or traditional analytic data databases like Iceberg, they handle this for you. You just have one column that you use to provide that time filter. So it's very common that we see people that are coming in, they've partitioned their tables and they've got a timestamp and they're filtering on something that is not actually partitioned. So Iceberg has great capability for this with timestamp partitioning, partition transforms, uh, leverage those things to improve performance and reduce the likelihood that people are going to make make mistakes in, in choosing how to construct their filters. But then the general recommendations we always give are find things that are low cardinality that people are using in query expressions and partition on those. Date is a great one, especially for event data, fact data, uh, anything that is like a category or a type that has, you know, some number of values, but isn't in the, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, that'll actually work really well for partition pruning, especially if people are using that within filter conditions. The next thing is sorting your data set. So sort your data set based on high cardinality fields. Like typically this will be things like account IDs or order IDs, anything that you are using in those queries, because Iceberg will do multiple layers of pruning and what each one of those layers does is it limits how much data is actually going to be sent to the processing engine. And the best way to get better performance is not to have like a faster engine. It's to actually read less data. So a good engine with less data is always going to outperform a fast engine that has too much data to process. So the last point here is, you know, choose the right engine. Uh, we see a lot of times that people have something like Spark. And Spark is a great powerhouse, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be able to do ad hoc queries or sub-second queries. And then you spend a lot of time engineering around, like trying to keep sessions open and, you know, passing protocols uh, for executing queries to try and get that latency down when your best option may be to pick a different engine. And that's part of what the flexibility of Iceberg provides. So best practice here, uh, enhanced data engineering practices with Iceberg features. It's the main thing. Uh, Iceberg provides a lot of uh, interesting features that you can leverage to improve performance, but still need data engineering practices.